What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video back on Riverside Royals Dynasty currently ranked inside the top 10. The Royals are number seven and the reason we are so high even after not playing a ton of games so far we are six and zero. There have been so many losses inside the top 10 that have pushed a bunch of these teams far down the board. So the college football playoff poll is now alive and well. I've been getting asked a lot whether I'm actually going to do the four to eight team playoff with the college football revamped like mod editor. And the answer is yes. I don't think it was relevant for the first few years, but now that we're actually knocking on the door, we're definitely going to do it. It's going to be a four team playoff. So even if we're number five, suck to suck. We're not getting in with the potential to expand to eight at some point in the future but it will be a 14 playoff at least in this season and we are in position to make a run for it if we go undefeated it's very similar to the cincinnati situation we're a group of five team which for those who don't know that's the five outside the the power five so you have like the mountain west Sun Belt, um american stuff like that Conference USA and the MAC are the other two. It's just like the big five conferences that are not Power Five. So not Big Ten, not Pac-12, not Big 12, not SEC, and not ACC. Those are like the main big five outside of that. So it is possible that a team like Riverside could get in there with, you know, a good year and then, you know, going undefeated. Now, it doesn't always happen. You have to, you know, have some some lucky things go your way and some big ranked wins obviously but we have those ranked wins we've beaten some ranked teams now are they still ranked is an interesting question let's see so remember we've beaten indiana uh tulane and maryland maryland even at four and three after a loss to number 14 clemson in overtime yeah that's fair they don't drop too much maryland stays ranked but this is the first college football playoff poll. Let's see the AP so we can see uh, where teams were. So Maryland is in there, but obviously no Indiana and no Tulane, but we did beat them when they were ranked. So counts for something. Royal Field, the kingdom, the castle, currently the 58th toughest place to play. I mean, we're right there with Virginia Tech. I'll take that. Lane Stadium is notoriously tough, but this is the college football playoff rankings. This video is sponsored by Manscaped, also known as the best men's grooming company on the planet. And in particular, the Performance Package 4.0. It's 2022, new year, new you. You got to check some of these things out. And it, 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 listen, I recognize the fact that it looks a little bit haphazardly thrown in here, and it's because I actually use this stuff on a daily basis. Can't go wrong with the Crop Reviver, which is a ball toner, or the Crop Preserver, which is the ball deodorant. I would say that this package is probably headlined by the Weed Whacker and, of course, the Lawnmower 4.0, but nose and ear hair trimmer. And I know you know all about the Lawnmower 4.0 already. Here you can see the little induction based charging unit. Of course, the prize jewel, the lawnmower 4.0, of course, has a travel lock as well. All you have to do is hit it three times. Travel lock is engaged. And after three quick hits, then it is disengaged and you can use it again. So as long as that travel lock's on, this is never going to be going off in your bag. If you're traveling, wasting all this battery, which is pretty long to begin with. The Lawnmower 4.0 skin safe technology. You don't really have to worry about nicks, tears, snags, anything like that. So make sure to start your new year off right with Manscaped. Go to the link in the description, manscaped.com slash Bengal. Get the performance package 4.0. You're going to get two free gifts when you do that. The shed travel bag and of course the anti-chafing boxer briefs. Can't go wrong with either. So that's manscaped.com slash Bengal. 20% off plus those two free gifts free international shipping that's manscaped.com slash bangle the discount code will be applied automatically when you click that link the way i see it if we just keep winning i don't think i don't th and they might but i don't think they're going to keep the one loss teams ahead of us they might like obviously you would prefer a one loss like power five dominant team like i mean and these are all different conferences too beyond kentucky 
Pac-12 Oregon, Big 10 Iowa, SEC Alabama, and a Big 12 Oklahoma. You'd probably prefer those teams over an undefeated Mountain West school. I understand that, but who knows how the uh, the voting's gonna be. If we win out and go undefeated, I think it'd be tough to keep us out. Now on the schedule for the rest of the year, we have week nine, which is this one, hosting San Diego State, big rivalry game for us, although they have not been that good this year. Wyoming, Fresno State, at Hawaii, and at Boise before hosting UNLV. So a couple road games in there, Wyoming, Hawaii, and Boise State. But uh, I think we're capable of beating those teams. The only one that I think could really give us a problem is going to be Boise State, even though we lost to UNLV last year and lost to San Diego State last year, I believe. So we're looking for revenge one way or the other. I've updated recruiting just a little bit, kind of moving some points around. Um, but there's not really too much to say right now. Do we have any visits for this week? Stephen Hardy and Maurice Hurd. So let's see them. Stephen Hardy is a guard. Maurice Hurd is a center. We're all but locking him up. So it's good to know. And then Stephen Hardy looks like we're probably going to get as well. Kentucky's in the mix. But with the win, I think he's definitely going to commit. And I'm just excited to see some of these dominoes start to fall. Because with the win today, I really, really think we're probably going to see at least four new commits. I think Matt Montgomery could be one. Some of these other guys are going to be close. Like I don't know if I'm willing to say Michael Bird or Walter Spicer yet. I haven't offered either of these guys scholarships. But we still are in the lead nonetheless. But anyway, it'll be exciting to see. A guy like Luke Tucker, who we absolutely need, has not expressed interest in visiting the school yet, but with a win, I think that's going to change. And getting a four-star, 79 overall receiver as a freshman, not even a junior college transfer, would be unbelievable. So let's go ahead and host San Diego State. And of course, with the offensive lineman visiting, per usual, it's going to have to be 250 yards through the air and 100 yards on the ground to accomplish those bonus goals. I think they're going to commit. That would be my guess. The guard is a much bigger commit than the center, but it would be nice to get both to stay undefeated in the Mountain West. And overall, we need to win this game. San Diego State ranks very poorly. 90th ranked passing offense. We're number four in the nation. We are top five as well in rushing touchdowns. San Diego State fighting to stay inside the top 100. And we're hoping to dominate them here today. The Riverside Royals ready to defend the castle, defend the crown, and win a game here at Royal Field. Old Dominion, don't look at that. It's Riverside. <laughs> uh, Old Dominion, West Virginia. Yep, that's, that's what game this is. San Diego State versus number seven, Riverside, we are a top 10 team in the nation. I keep saying that because I can barely believe it myself. After the trials and tribulations of the first few seasons, here we are at the culmination of an excellent first half of the season. We're officially into the second half now. Rivalry game versus a San Diego State team that has beat us in the past. Shocked us last year. We were undefeated against them all time. Looking to get right back in the win column. And that's going to be led by Adam Daniel. Superstar, five-star freshman. He's got a cannon. He's got some running ability as well. And that's going to be lobbed up and complete to Michael Ham, probably his favorite target. Good ball over the trail player. And that sets up second and inches for... Let's get a little creative. Let's get Reggie Gonzalez the football. We'll swing pass blockers out in front. I like the idea. We're going to throw that. Reggie just doesn't have the speed. But we have the first down. Gonzalo's not the fastest player. Try to go around him. But he is a, a good power back. And I need to utilize that a bit more. I should have just taken that outside. Let's try it again. I just thought he was going to get an animation and, and play the contain there. And force us back inside. So I didn't want that to happen. But worked much better that time for the first. 
Wide open over the middle, it's John Humphreys. He's got space, although he lacked speed. And it's a big 25 yard gain for the former Stanford transfer. I think he's more synonymous with the Royals at this point. Oh, that's pressure. Just get that football away. I think that was a Mike Blitz. Linebacker came in completely unblocked. I didn't see where he started from, but I would assume that was the inside linebacker. All right. Lucky, luckily, that was uh, not disastrous. We got rid of the football. Although we're facing pressure again, and Daniel is sacked. Needed to throw that away, but thought we had the speed to get around the edge, and Schwanky brings him down. I thought at this point we had enough space, but... Good closing speed from the defensive end, and we're backed up to third and incredibly long. I mean, the one thing I talked about, which is, oh, good to throw it away, and then we go to the next play and don't throw it away. Over the top. It's Barrett Reed! Diving catch! And the speedster getting a little bit more playing time, and every time he's in the game, he's making these big splash plays, keeping the drive alive on third and infinite, it seemed. But Barrett Reed coming up clutch. Big time catch, big time conversion. And a first down for Riverside. Handoff, Gonzalez up the middle. It's a touchdown. How many times have we seen that this year? It's the go-to. Get Reggie Gonzalez the ball near the goal line. He's going to score every time. The blocking was excellent. And that is a good way to start the game. Made a couple mistakes. Maybe more, like, one big one taking that sack to bring up third and long. But Barrett Reed makes up for it as Air Force has defeated Boise State. Whiting, the receiver, over 230 yards receiving. But they lose. Here's a run. Oh, Jackson, you gotta get the contain. Big block on the outside. Hall in pursuit, trying to drag him down, riding on his back, but McTaggart has a big gain of 30. All right. We need to uh, not let that happen again. I'm gonna try and limit what this offense is capable of, and there's the hall monitor. Making sure Cunningham can't go anywhere. First time seeing Ronald Cunningham at quarterback for San Diego State, I believe. But we are all too familiar with Taggart, or Mick Taggart. I believe he had a very, very good season last year. At least a very good game against us. Assume it would translate. Second and 14. Aztecs to pass. Cunningham gonna take off, ball comes loose. And Moore jumps on it. Is that Marcus Kerr who got in there? Who delivered the pressure? That is the true freshman Marcus Kerr off the edge. Football popped out. We just couldn't dive on it. Sets up third and long though, which is the situation we're going to be more than happy to uh, be in. And we'll just see if we can limit what they can do. I don't, I don't like what the defense is. We have Adrian Chandler playing linebacker. Greg Hall is playing defensive end. What's happening here? It's a screen. Hall getting blocked from behind. They got blockers to the outside. Joseph Brown can't force him out. But McTaggart eventually is forced out by, I believe that's Bruce Clemens, and they will punt. Chaos. Sometimes when you when they go hurry up and you try to change the play, they change up where everyone should be on the field. So you have Adrian Chandler, the defensive end, playing linebacker. Greg Hall takes his position at defensive end. Everything's wonky, and it's like, yeah, San Diego State's clearly going to be able to take advantage of that, and they did, but not enough for the first down. It's just very frustrating when uh, your team has no idea what to do, as Daniel's going to break a tackle, pitch it outside to Gonzalez, stiff-arming down the field. It's a nice gain for Reggie. Read option, good blocks. Daniel breaks a tackle. Good run from Adam Daniel. He is electric. Second and 10, gonna try a run to Reggie Gonzalez. And Reggie Gonzalez running strong, 12 yards. Didn't know how he even got through that hole in the first place, but I'm not complaining. Phil Triplett into the game, looks like a little bit of a blitz. So we're gonna throw short for Corey Warren. Take the guaranteed yardage, and of course, when you get it to some of your fast receivers, and 86 speed isn't too slow for a receiver. You get some of these run after catch opportunities. We're gonna take advantage of those. Second and two. Throwing for Elgin Collins. Nice catch for the first. Way to work back to the football. 
Another good drive here for Riverside. Gonzalez takes it up the middle. Need to run over some of these guys, Reggie. It's not a bad run, obviously. We'll take that, but we expect some five-star plays from our five-star. Go through them, put them in the dirt. Let's move on with our lives. Second and three. Option, Daniel Keeper. And he is wrapped up. Nice tackle by the safety. Triplet into the backfield. He'll get the pitch. And that is a nice stop by San Diego State. Phil Triplett didn't have the speed to beat him on the edge. Tried to cut that inside, but on fourth and one with the lead against a, an inferior team, let's just be honest at this point, we are going to go for this because what's the worst thing that happens? San Diego State has to go 98 yards, maybe. I mean, we could lose more yards than that, right? But fourth and one, we're trusting Phil Triplett up the middle. He's got the touchdown. Yeah, just doesn't have the best speed to the outside, but straight line speed, Phil Triplett's pretty good. He is an awesome backup running back to have. Remember, he's a red shirt, freshman at this point, so we're going to have a lot of Phil Triplett over these next few years. Probably eventually earn the starting job. And he's a heck of a player. As Stanford trying to knock off number three Oregon in Eugene. I think that's where Oregon plays. Eugene, Oregon? I think so. Yes, Austin Stadium is in Eugene, Oregon. And it is first and 10 for San Diego State. Looking to have some more smothering defense. Run right, staying back up the middle though. Greg Hall, nice tackle. It's a five yard gain for McTaggart. But I felt like that was a pretty nice play made by Greg Hall and company. Eating up blocks is a big part of defensive line play on those runs and it's second and five quick throw over the middle Craig Jackson in coverage kind of confused to run right that's the, we got to make those tackles Tim Washington not a run defender and also he can't catch now you might be asking what is Tim Washington actually good at as Alan Hart is injured hopefully not for too long uh, he's pretty good in coverage so there is that now we got a little stunt going on. Phil Walker and Craig Jackson going to be switching spots there. And that's going to be a throw to the flat. Tim Washington, of course, not going to wrap him up. Joseph Brown is there. Actually, it's Sam Brown, excuse me. Making the tackle third and two. Sending the house. Bobby Anderson off the edge as well. We're going to bring him up closer. Trust Sam Brown in coverage. It's a run. And that is a broken tackle at the worst possible time. That's excellent speed to the end zone. And that is a San Diego State touchdown by Mark Irvin. Oh, man. Can we see the broken tackle? Yeah, the broken tackle was huge because we would have been in position to make the play. But the contact and then the broken tackle animation forced us out of position. And then he just had the speed to beat everybody else to the end zone. That is really unlucky. Try a screen here. Looks like it's going to be open. It's Corey Warren. Good space, and it's an easy first down. Getting creative. I love a good screen. It's just, you know, it doesn't always work. Oh, this is going to be a really good counter. Look at Reggie Gonzalez go. Good stiff arm. Gonzalez still fighting. What a run from Reggie Gonzalez. Good blocking down the field, but that's a great extra effort. Check this out. Gonzalez in space here, locks on with the defender, throws him off, and gets what? Maybe seven, eight extra yards as a result. Great run from our number one. Gonna scramble with Daniel. Get out in space, Adam. See, the problem is I want to be able to use all these rush moves, like a juke or a spin, like some of these moves to make guys miss. But you can't really do that until you're actually like kind of far beyond the line of scrimmage. Maybe double tapping R2 would make that change. We're going to go to the end zone though. Daniel to Ham! Beautiful throw and Ham got a foot down. Sometimes out of habit, I will say two feet down. Uh, and I don't even realize I'm saying it. Yeah, I, I realize in college football it is one foot. Been watching college football for a number of years. But I love... Um, Mango, I, I don't know if you knew this. Sometimes I just misspeak, dude. Uh, that's all there is to it. Especially when I record these late. But it's 2.15 in the afternoon. I'm sharper than ever. And Stanford looking sharper than ever. 20-7 to 7 over Oregon. 
Let's see if they can hold on. That would be big for Riverside. We are rooting for an upset because we will certainly, without question, move up in the polls with an Oregon loss. We are praying for an Oregon loss and things are looking pretty good so far. That's such a sick throw by Adam Daniel, by the way. Like, I feel like we didn't really get to talk about that throw a ton. Good catch by Ham, obviously, but he just got, you know, space over the top. What a ball by Adam Daniel. You got to give credit where credit's due. And it's second and one. Outside receiver in motion, left to right. Now going doubles, looks like a draw, and it is. We are all over that. McTaggart loses a yard. Marcus Kerr, credit with making that tackle. His third tackle for loss of the game already in just the second quarter. Marcus Kerr, I called him out recently. I said, hey, you made a nice play in week one. Haven't really seen you beyond that. And he's proven us wrong today. Making a lot of big plays. It's a face mask. And that's going to be extra 15 on the end of that one. Now, this was commented, and I do kind of agree with it. Bengal, you got to reduce the likelihood of face masks. There's too many face mask penalties all the time. But here's the thing is I do kind of like as that's a nice tackle by Sam Brown. I do kind of like that there's something. It doesn't have to be necessarily a face mask anytime because there's like almost never defensive pass interference or defensive holding or helmet to helmet hits that would result in these extra yardage and things like that. They're just not in the game. So you can take any of the number of penalties that could happen on offense or defense. On defense, it's a face mask. You call it, you know, whichever different thing actually happens in real life frequently, like helmet to helmet or defensive holding or any of these different things. And on offense, the clipping that happens all the time. Well, that could be clipping, holding, a number of different things. I think it adds to kind of the, uh, the real feel of the game, even if it isn't always a face mask in real life. So hopefully that makes sense. San Diego State to try a field goal. That is wide, right? What a college kickers do. They miss. This one, I'm not even sure if it had the leg. Looked like it may have, but would have been close. And it was wide right anyways. Quick throw. Didn't mean to lob that. Wanted a bullet pass there. I think we have a much better result. Unfortunate. Yeah, we're running here. Daniel, back up the middle of the field. Has good wheels. Making a man miss. And Adam Daniel being real aggressive, not sliding there. It's a 17-yard gain. You know, it's funny. Even when they have somebody accounting for the quarterback, Daniel at times is just a little bit too fast, and it just doesn't really even matter. Not really a classic power run by Reggie Gonzalez, but his juke rating is pretty high. So we try to get that going uh, quite a bit. It is second in inches. He didn't feel that fast on that. I'm surprised to see him in still. Would have figured he'd be a little bit gassed or something, be coming out of the game. But second in inches. They're going to play Reggie Gonzalez. Daniel, room up the middle. That's a big truck. And another nice gain for our QB. First and goal run for Triplett. He goes up the middle. And Phil Triplett has his second touchdown of the game. Riverside pouring it on here early. 28-7 over San Diego State, penning the extra point. This offense remains very, very good. And San Diego State just hasn't been able to move the ball too much on our defense. Let's play action. Ooh, wide open receiver is the tight end, Jay Rudolph. Please bring him down. All right. Not going to happen. Clemens saves the touchdown, but it's 20 yards by McTaggart. Cunningham going to run. And that is a pretty good gain by the quarterback. Timeout, San Diego State. That was a good play design by them. Saw some man coverage. Got the running back leaking out to the flat. Hall, of course, forced to cover. And then the quarterback takes off for an easy eight. Second and two. And they're going to go corner route. Rudolph can't hang on, but that's it's a good throw. That needs to be caught if you're San Diego State. Is this a run? Quarterback keeper. Hall found it. What a great individual effort by the quarterback. And it's a first down. I can't even believe that. Read perfectly. Pitch right. Hall all over it. Nice tackle. McTaggart loses a yard. Look at the Hall monitor. 
Greg Hall. Big time tackle. Love to see it. Third and 11. Man across the board. Quick snap from the Aztecs. Cunningham to the flat. Craig Jackson all over it. Rudolph back to the line. And that is going to be a timeout. Riverside looking to get the football back. This is a very makeable kick. Should probably be 28-10. Riverside with two timeouts. 38 seconds to score. Maybe a bit more. As that's wide right. What do college kickers do? Why did I even doubt it? Just wide right of that right upright. And oh my goodness. Things cannot go right other than that kick for the Aztecs right now. Why are we throwing that? Oh my, switched on. It couldn't work back. Oh! Interception, Adam Daniel. That that couldn't have been worse. I, the ball came out way, 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 way too late. And then uh, it was just disaster after that. I can't throw that. That's so bad for me. I don't know what came over me to throw that ball. And Bengals throwing for content. That yes, think think that. Think I'm more, better than I am. I mean. Cunningham going to take off, breaks a tackle, but Phil Walker actually gets a sack. Or actually, Willie Hollins. That might be his first ever sack in NCAA collegiate football. That's going to be a completion. I mean, no bones about it. Cunningham going to take off again. And this time, they're actually going to give him credit for a one-yard run. The Aztecs call their final timeout, and they're setting up for the field goal. I assume it's going in, but you never know. And that is right down the middle. Ugh. What a botch job at the end of the first half here. We're up by 18. Doesn't really matter too much, but obviously not the way we wanted to end the first half. Not at all. And that is halftime. 28-10 to 10 in this rivalry matchup. 6-0 against 1-5 San Diego State. The game overall is going as you'd expect. But not sponsored by Nissan. I still think we need to play better. Our defense has been gashed a bit too much. And we obviously haven't taken advantage of every offensive opportunity. It's easy to focus on the interception at the end of the half. Like, would we have scored like no matter what on that drive? Definitely not. But I think... I think there was definitely the potential to and the brain dead interception just obviously cost us running games been pretty good i want to continue to focus on that i feel like that's been great here but uh yeah we'll just look to keep doing what we're doing not get too crazy and just edge out san diego state they're not going to be able to come back in the game if we score on every drive so uh, we're gonna keep trying to do that stay aggressive when we can though fourth and one in their territory we're probably going to still go for it depending on the situation but let's play strong in the second half and get a big time win and i really do mean big time win at this point every game is super big for us because we have a lot to lose we're improbably in a situation where we could be playing for a college football playoff spot and just one loss and all of that is completely over. It's out the window. So we have to continue to play really well. And not get too crazy. That's a fumble by McTaggart. Recovered by Phil Walker. That football come out? It looked like he may have still been standing. He was stumbling. And yeah, I think Sam Brown forced the fumble. And this time, we dive on it. Now, it's going to go to a review. Usually, that's a really bad sign. Oh, I think the ground may have caused the fumble with that left knee down. Very close. I think it hit at the same time in real life. Probably not overturned in the game. Probably reversed. And it is. San Diego State keeps possession. Would have been a good start to the second half for us, though. Instead, the Aztecs keep it. Malik James stiff-armed. Joseph Brown completely pancaked. Tim Washington bumps him out of bounds. Look at Joseph Brown on this play. He's going to be at the top of your screen. Boom. Killed by the offensive lineman. 
That was ugly. Run outside. Clemens, please. Oh, nice tackle on Irvin. Seen him break a couple tackles. That's nice open field. Bring him down. Love it. Pitch right. Quarterback keeps it. Loses a yard. Nice tackle. Craig Jackson getting involved. His second tackle for loss really hasn't done a ton this game. Only three tackles, but two of them for loss. Can't really hate on that. Over the middle, open and intercepted by Bruce Clemens. Blocker out in front was Greg Hall. He didn't block, but that's an interception for the free safety. He had his first interception in the bowl game last year, I believe. And this is second against San Diego State. Nice pick in the end zone. Looked open underneath that ball. Just undercut by Bruce Clemens. Underrated that speed, but I think he has 92 speed. I think both safeties do. So they've got pretty good closing speed as well. And it's a great play. Michael Hamm looking like he's getting deep. And the safety. Oh, nice play. Although I will say that ball needs to be farther down the field. Play action. Oh, pressure off the edge. Daniel on the move. We're going to throw it up. Humphrey started to turn around. I would usually always run there with Daniel. Tried to get it to the, everyone's favorite, John Humphreys. And he's like, nah. I'm not doing it. Look at him run up the field as we throw the ball. Check this out. He goes, no, I'm not going for it. What are you doing? Third and 10. We are getting a little bit too weird on offense. Just got to take what's there and that's getting it to Reggie Gonzalez. Give me Barrett Reed down the field. Ah, pressure. Couldn't get the throw to Humphreys. All right, Daniel To'o To'o. wonder if there's any relation to Henry. It's third and 23. Going deep down the field. Corey Warren, nice catch. Good ball from Daniel that time. Not leading it too far down the field. And Corey Warren just easily in there. Second and 11. They're really committing to stopping the run here. It's kind of annoying. So I want to run the ball. We have a step there. Bonk. Off the hands of Barrett Reed. Got to catch that. Fourth and four. Going for it here. Wide open. Hayford. First down. We just haven't really involved him too much in the offense this year. Which I don't really have a problem with. But he's, he's capable of making a play every now and again. Safety coming up. Hayford. Wow, that's not an accurate pass by Daniel. That's a touchdown to Blake Hayford. Missed him. Nearly intercepted. Triplet up the middle. Looking for touchdown number three. It's a nice game. Read option. Daniel wide open. Touchdown. And that might put things out of reach for the Aztecs. Should be 35-10 Riverside. Not a great drive, all things considered. Yeah, it did end up going 99 yards. That's very nice. <laughs> but, uh, need to be better. And Iowa, number four Iowa, shut out at Northwestern. 24 nothing. And if you think Iowa is going to be ranked inside the top 10 after this, I think you might be mistaken. Maybe staying in the top 10, but... They're certainly outside the top five. Riverside will be moving up. Cunningham, is he going to scramble? Look at the hall monitor. Relentless pursuit to the quarterback. I mean, he got cut down earlier. Got back up. Saw that Cunningham was going to scramble. And defying the laws of gravity and physics somehow got latched onto the QB. We're blitzing Jackson. Over the middle. Cunningham ball barely gets away. Incomplete. That is so open, it's not even funny. San Diego State's done that a couple times now. Man coverage is thrown to the tight end on a corner route. We've just been beat. Quick throw! It's intercepted by Allen Hart! Second pick of the game for the team. 
Alan Hart left earlier with an injury and he is back in a big way second pick by Cunningham and that's certainly going to do things here at Riverside I don't think San Diego State really has a chance to come back anymore if we capitalize and score I mean it's it's over third and ten looking to keep the drive alive that's not the throw just kidding Michael Ham first down what are the Aztecs doing, man? Oh, that was risky. Sometimes you just got to trust Michael Hamm. Daniel's favorite target. And, I don't know, that, that DB's an idiot. Second and goal. Reed across formation. He'll catch it. But will be short of the end zone. Brings up third and goal. Do we just give it to Reggie Gonzalez? I think that's what you're waiting for three down linemen they're begging us to run the ball run up the middle Gonzalez power and is short I'm actually shocked that the CPU wants us to kick the field goal here I don't think that's the right call up the middle Gonzalez short how do you not power through him there great tackle but holy great stop by San Diego State now, the problem for them is they have to go 99 yards, 99 and a half yards, even. So they are backed up in a really bad spot. McTaggart in motion. Cunningham under pressure. But with the lead, I'm very comfortable going for it. I know we didn't get it, but I mean, as long as we keep them in front of us on this drive, time's going to keep ticking off the clock. I think we all know that San Diego State is not getting back in this game. Nice tackle by Hall. Third and three. Where are we going with the football? Underneath. Nice tackle by Craig Jackson. Totally fine. Yeah, the clock is going to stop for the first down momentarily, but as soon as that thing's spotted, it's going to be going again. So time continues to tick off the clock. We're going to stay aggressive and hopefully make the most of this. Probably going to be rocking a lot of 5-2 for the rest of the game. Just to get the most pass rushers going after the quarterback. Trying to get some pressure. And that's nearly intercepted by Greg Hall sliding after the Clemens deflection. That would have been a sick interception. But we're trying to get a lot of pressure on the QB. And when they're in situations where they are forced to pass. That's why it's so tough for teams to come back when they go down in games. Because, you know, you know they're going to pass. You know it's going to be a pass. You can just blitz and you can just instead of even trying to defend the run as an edge rusher set the edge you're just in pass rush mode all the time coming up on a three minute drive here for san diego state which we are obviously very okay with because there's not a whole lot of time left in the game as cunningham is sacked by willie hollands again his second sack of the game love that from willie hollands maybe he's going to heat up down the stretch here Big recruit by us, obviously. Moved him inside to defensive tackle. And uh, hope he continues to play well. As well as he played in this game, he's looked awesome. Fourth and five. Four minutes and 15 seconds remain in the game. Not a good spot for San Diego State. Need to convert to stay in the game. It's a screen and it is a first down by Mark Irvin. Unreal. To run, to play act. Oh, it's it is a run. That's bizarre. Adrian Chandler's first recorded stat in the game is a TFL. There, he's been very quiet of late. Had a really big season last year, and I I mean we can check the stats after the game, and maybe we will. But I don't really think he's played that big of an impact in this season. Good tackle by Tim Washington. Time just continues to tick off the clock. Obviously. We don't really even care if San Diego State scores here. We just want more time off the clock, and it's exactly what's happening. That's going to be a touchdown. Terry McTaggart gets in the end zone. It's going to be 35-17. Still in favor of the Royals. Three minutes to play. It's just... It's too much for them to overcome. Stanford did hold on to beat Oregon, by the way. So number three and number four both go down. 
as number nine, Michigan beats Purdue. And Fresno State beats New Mexico in the Mountain West. Reggie Gonzalez still short of 100 yards on the game, by the way. It's so wild because he was at 95 and has had like four or five carries since then. And we just can't get anything. Third and seven. Run up the middle. Gonzalez is short. And we're not going to go for it here, probably. I mean, I guess, I mean, they want us to. Game ends with a first down. You know, all right, might as well. We'll see if Reggie can do it. If not, doesn't really matter. Up the middle, and he is short. Oh my goodness, dude. Ugh, why can he not power through anybody? Now, thankfully, the score is what it was, and, and decisions would be different, given a different score. But, I mean, imagine if they had 28 instead of 17. That could have been really bad for us, not converting there. But I'm not sure we even tried if we're only up by a touchdown. Probably, I don't know, punt it back? That's a tough spot, but you know, we'll uh, hopefully never get into that situation and just stay with a big lead all the time against different teams. But uh, yeah, San Diego State trying to score some garbage time points. Good for them, I guess. And they spike the ball to bring up third and 11. And they're gonna run. Hall's thrown off and came back to make the tackle anyway. It's fourth and five. I don't know what the game plan is, but this is uh, maybe their final offensive play of the game. Fourth and five, need the first to stay alive. Cunningham gonna throw short, and that is caught, and then out of bounds, well short of the first down, game over. Gonzalez, nice move. Do you have the speed? Good tackle. I, we just can't break any tackles right now though. But no timeouts for uh, for San Diego State. And that's going to be your ball game. 35-17. Man, a lot of things I think we could have done better. Some, what I would say at this point, uncharacteristic mistakes by Riverside. Both offensively and defensively. More offensively though. Even though like we had a good game. We scored 35. Uh, it could have been a lot more. It could have been a lot better. And at the end of the game there, we got to... We just got to do a better job of closing out. So I will say that. Some things we can take away, but it feels good to beat a rival. It always does. And, uh, yeah, what can you say? Just, we'll hopefully build on that. And, I mean, we got our recruit goals accomplished as well. Things are looking pretty good. And let's go over the stats. Adam Daniel, 15-26, 255 yards passing, a touchdown and a pick. Rushing, Reggie Gonzalez, great game overall, 17 for 111 and a touchdown. Phil Triplett, two touchdowns. We had four overall on the ground. Only one through the air was that bomb to Michael Hamm. Uh, interesting game overall from our receivers. Greg Hall, 12 solo tackles, including three for loss. They'd have a sack as well. Look at all these guys making an impact. Guys I want to shine a light on, Marcus Kerr, Willie Hollins, true freshman, played great today, I thought. Sacks for Willie Hollins, Kerr, and Greg Hall. And also interceptions for Alan Hart and Bruce Clemens. Good game from them. Forced fumble by Marcus Kerr as well. He was awesome. Got to give him credit. Nice win to stay undefeated overall. And of course, undefeated in the Mountain West. New trophy, living legend. Wonder what that is. Ooh, huge recruit, finally. Eric Smith has committed to Riverside. We lost out on the fullback, Joel Holmes. He was like a minus eight bust. But what a victory to get Eric Smith recruited. Remember, that was the tackle Ohio State was going after pretty hard. So that is a major win. And we are inside the top five, moving up to number four. Oh my goodness. And in the college football playoff, we are ranked at number three. Kentucky lost. Oh my god. Kentucky drops from two to seven. Oregon and Iowa lost. They're outside the top ten. Mizzou lost. Number five LSU beat them, so we gotta watch out for LSU making a push. And Akron undefeated inside the top 25. But look at us. Number three in the college football playoff poll. If we win out, 
we are looking at a college football playoff appearance without question. Unbelievable. A lot more points opened up as well as San Jose State's trying to get back in it by or for Matt Montgomery. They're gaining traction. Did he just visit or something? No. Visit in week 14. We can put more points on it. It doesn't really matter because he's not great, but... I mean, what's another somewhat decent player we can develop with good speed and route running? I mean, that's someone I'm okay redshirting, and if we lose him, whatever. But if we keep him, that's not bad. Getting more of a concrete lead on Corey Hale, we can afford to put more points in there now. Because we don't have a scholarship for Michael Bird or Walter Spicer, it is tough to... Uh, get these guys to commit because they want scholarships obviously and I have not offered them scholarships I might as well I might as well try to get both of them add in 50 points they're decent players they're backups whatever NC State making a push on Mike Johnson we can move those points up to 700 Juco Andy Harris I mean it's just kind of a matter of time I'm gonna put in more points on Brian Bradley as well I'm gonna probably move a lot of points around Florida getting in on Luke Tucker plus 345 we're gonna have to put in a lot of points there but he is ready to visit let's check out the guys who are ready to visit we figure that out it is big that some of these guys are ready to visit though Juco stud John Holt probably I mean would we consider starting him right away might redshirt him honestly but we want to schedule a visit and got to be the complimentary visit with uh with Corey Hale there Florida really making a push for Luke Tucker something we cannot afford so we need to put probably 700 points on him and get him in as soon as possible Nevada making a big push for Alex Jones definitely someone I like don't love but like and we'll go against Fresno State as well it's a battle for Pat Armstrong. A lot of different guys want him. We're going to schedule him against Fresno State too. Why not? Just getting all these guys week 11. Score doesn't change for these guys down the stretch. Uh, Steve Lewis is not going to be Fresno State though. He's going to be UNLV. We get bonus points for scheduling it anyway. So that's an easy decision. And I'm going to take points off Matt Montgomery, obviously, to put him on the other receiver. Luke Tucker It's just way more important. Also, Christian Mason. We are so close to having him. We just need another week, hopefully, and Tulane falls out of the battle. I'm keeping 700 points on him. He, he visits Tulane in week 10. It's week 10. Oh, things could change big time. We really needed to wrap that up. It's going to be really bad if he has a good visit there. It's going to be really, really bad. Some of these guys are so close to committing. I'm going to take points off Stephen Hardy because we just don't really need him. He is like a week away, I think, from committing to Riverside. Visits Kentucky and Marshall in week 11 and 12. Like Kentucky could get back in it a little bit. But I think he's going to commit before then. I'd rather have him on Anthony Minor and just get that, get that guaranteed with Arizona State making a late push. But that's going to do it for me here today. We are ranked at number four going to Wyoming. And then we'll host Fresno State and probably have even more players ready to visit at that point. So a lot to do down the stretch, but hopefully we continue with, you know, our huge momentum and beat Wyoming. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Since ain't I hit at the park, Ben Bones. See me high step to the end zone. My life like a game Nintendo. Play with the best, let them know. Get off the track, the train's coming through. Yeah. Promise you get in my way, then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah, yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud.